All right, folks, so how many times does this happen to you? You open up Pepicure Designer, you go to open up your file, you load in your file, you go through the auto detection, and then... Well, that took a while, but let's continue. Everything's really slow. That's a lot of red. I sure hope this doesn't freeze on me. Pep designer. Pep designer. Pep designer! Alright, so this is actually a pretty common occurrence. Now I'm going to explain why it happens and how to fix it in this video. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so actually pretty funny enough, I waited around long enough and the model did load in. But as you can see, trying to move it around, it's a bit clunky, a bit really, really bad. Uh, the main occurrence for this is actually because this model here is such a high definition model that it has too many faces. So let's go back to where I first loaded this in and take a look. All right, so when I originally load in the model, you first pop up with this screen. I always just put auto detect, it's been a standard. So we hit okay. Loads in the file. And this is such a big file that it does take quite a while to load in. All right, so it pops up with this screen next, showing how many vertices and faces. This doesn't really give us too much information, but the next screen will. So right here, it's showing us that the file has too many faces. Number value of 476,688. Uh, what I come to learn is that Pepicure Designer tends to freeze and crash or just move really slow if the number of faces is over 70,000, which this one is over by quite a lot. 400,000 to be exact. Well, 406,000 to be exact. So to solve our issue here and get the run a little bit better, we need to drop the number of faces, which is basically the number of triangles that a model has. Now the number of faces and the number of triangles on a model can be traced back to its mesh. The mesh is the overall encompassing skin of the model. So to fix this, we're actually gonna need a program that can load in and fix the meshes, or at least decrease the number of value. And I have the program just for you. All right, so the program we're gonna need here is MeshLab. Now MeshLab is a free program you can download online and I'll provide the link down here at the bottom. Um, I will admit that their download page does look quite sketchy, but trust me, uh, there's no malware. It is a free, fo uh, free program and I've used it for a number of years now. And you wanna make sure that it has this eyeball logo. That way you know it's the right one. But like I said, I'll put a direct link to their webpage, go to their download page, and then click the one for your operating system. All right, so we're going to open up Mesh Labs. That'll bring us to this page. Now what you're going to want to do is go to File and Import Mesh. Scroll down until you find your file, which I'm using the Samus helmet, and open it. You'll pop up with this screen first. Um, just leave everything as is, Unify, Duplicated, and remember values for next time. Do not click this button so that way you know that it's working properly. All right, once the file is loaded in, you can move it around just like any 3D modeler. And now you can actually see how many triangles there are in this model. I go to this specific corner here and you can just see all these individual triangles. These are the faces. These are what are causing the issue. There are how many? 468,000? give or take. So basically we just need to reduce the number of faces here. And this is where this program comes in handy. All right, starting from the main screen, we go to filters, which is quite a bit, but we're gonna go down to remeshing, simplification and reconstruction, which brings up a lot more, but don't worry, I'm here to guide you. We are gonna go down to simplification, quadratic edge collapse and decimation. Clicking on it will bring up this screen. Now what I've come to learn is as long as you don't touch anything on this screen, it's gonna help us. You'll see up here that the target number of faces is 241,984, which is exactly half of what we had loaded in before. 
What I've come to learn is every time that you open up this particular filter, it always cuts the target number and faces in half. So all you have to do is hit apply and it will immediately cut the number of faces in half. Now we can go in and hit apply to do that or we can go up here and actually change the target number of faces to what we want. Keep in mind that every time that you adjust this number, whatever you punch in, so say we punched in the 70,000 to make Pepe Cure Designer detect it and run smoothly. But what I've come to learn is that if you do this right off the bat, with certain models, sometimes you will run into problems. So instead what I've learned to do is instead of doing that, just uh, when you open it, simply leave alone this number and just hit apply. You'll see it run process down here in the bottom. And then once that bar is completely done, you can close out and it's cut the number in half. Now, if we reopen it, we should see that now it's cut in half once again. So now we're just gonna repeat this process until we get under 70,000. But what you'll notice every time that I hit apply, you'll notice the model is slightly changing. This is because we're actually reducing the number of triangles, which is making everything more blocky, essentially, which is what Pepe Cure Design is to do. It's designed to take in low poly models and then you can work with them. High poly models doesn't work so well, crashes or just runs really bad. You'll especially notice that these changes are happening on the uh, little rebreather tube here. It's gone from being round to starting to be very polygonal. And as we keep going, you're going to notice that it keeps changing. Now, what I've learned is for models, especially I chose Samus' helmet for a reason because it is very round. Uh, the rounder the model is or the more sharp edges it has, you'll start noticing the polygonal faster. So we're going to go ahead and keep dropping this down. Now we're reaching 60,000. And we can definitely see now that it's getting a lot bumpier. It's not as smooth as it once was. It is quite bumpy. So now we're under the 70,000 threshold, actually by half now, we're about 35,000. So what we're gonna wanna do is go to File, Export Mesh As, and you wanna change the file save type to an STL or an OBJ. I usually prefer STL just because STL can work in a lot more programs, but you can choose either one of these. Change it and then just rename the thing to something like Remeshed. Now you'll pop up with this menu, leave everything alone, just hit OK, and it'll create a new file for this. Now you want to stick around because I'm going to show you why it's better to go even further down than just getting under that 70 threshold. Because remember, 70,000 is where it starts to crash. So the lower you can go, the better you'll be. And I'll show you why. So reopening Pepe Cure Designer and then loading in the remeshed helmet. We should be able to see it go a lot faster. Number of faces, 60,000. OK, so it did not cut it in half. That is the number. Right, because when we loaded it in, that's what it told us. I'm dumb. <laughs> so we're at 60,000. You know what? Yeah, we'll still run it. We'll see. We'll see how well it runs. This time, I'm actually going to change the face. So it's facing forward. We're under that 70 threshold, and boom. Loads in just fine. Now, it might be a bit choppy. Let's see if it is. Yep, still a bit choppy because we're near that upper threshold limit of 70,000. So let's go ahead and click Unfold. And we're going to end up with quite a mess. And a quite long unfolding time because we're still near that 70,000 threshold. Okay, it's finished unfolding. Let's 
go ahead and turn off the flaps and turn off the texture so we can see a little better. You'll notice that, well, <laughs> unlike most unfolds, it is very messy. There are lines everywhere. Pieces are scattered. Little triangle flakes are left around. For the most part, it's actually finding decent full pieces. Uh, it could just be the model itself, or it could be that the program is actually running pretty good. Like I said, still a bit chug a lug. And when we look in here, it is quite the mess. Uh, this method obviously does not work for pepping helmets. This is more for if you're taking uh, pieces and converting them to foam for foam smithing. Unless you really want to lower the, the, the uh, number of faces, which case it's going to end up being very, very polygonal. So we have a giant mess on our hands. And this is why just getting underneath that threshold usually isn't the best solution. The best solution is to try to get as low as possible while keeping the model stable. Let's go back into Mesh Labs. And we're going to keep lowering this. And as we keep lowering it, you'll notice that some of these edges might go a little haywire. I'm checking right now to see if any of them have. Normally it's going to be in like pits and valleys like this or where two pieces meet at a weird angle. I was noticing up front here, this little spot right here maybe, but it seems to be holding. Um, as we lower the number of faces, it's going to want to try to basically condense on itself because you're combining all these faces together. And at some point, eventually, going to reach a threshold where you want it to lower the amount of triangles and it just can't find anywhere else so it starts combining pieces this is what we don't want so as you keep doing this just keep an eye out on the model itself for any drastic changes and that way um, unfortunately I don't think this program has a go back feature it does not. Uh, so as you keep remeshing it, it's going to, you can't go back. So you're gonna have to just keep a track of what number you ended on. And if you go too far, go back into the program and do it all over again and get to a safer number. So everything looks fine. We'll run it one more time. going lower so now we're at 15,000 still looks like it's doing pretty good the top of the helmet here is denting in just a slight hair I think right here did we lose any of the channel we did not it's starting to get a little bumpy you can see the edge right here is starting to fold in on itself just a hair um, depending on how you do your foam work. That may or may not cause an issue. We can definitely tell that this thing has lost all of its roundness. It has now become block. But everything's still holding. We'll try one more. We want to get this as, like I said, as low as possible without breaking stuff. So we're going to get it down to 7,500. Okay, well, we've lost, we've definitely lost that. Uh, for a minute there, I thought we lost the visor, but I think it was just zoomed out too far for that edge to show up. This isn't looking too bad. This is starting to really cave in on itself. We've lost the sheer drop and is now an angled ramp going down in. And that's what I mean. Like it's starting to run out of, of places to reduce triangles. Overall, we still have a general good shape. It's starting to lose a little bit of roundness on the front too, but it's not terrible. And a lot, of, especially when you work with foam and you smooth it out, it will be rounded anyway. So I think this is a good stop in number. 7,000 is pretty good. Obviously you won't be making these out of foam, so this wouldn't really matter. Uh, but you do have to watch out on certain models that have pieces like this where if you want to try to make it out of foam, it's going to 
really hurt them, especially really round cylinder shapes and everything like that. All right, so let's go ahead and export this again. Remember, every time it comes up, it'll try to do a plug it file format and change that to STL or LBJ. Rename this to Remesh2. Okay. Let's bring up PEP4. Let's load in a new. No, no changes. Let's load in Remesh2. Auto detect. 7,562, that is, it always says too many faces for some reason, but this is the number I always watch, remember that. And hopefully you never click this off <laughs> because I've never clicked this off and I don't know if you do, it never comes back. Um, but if you never see this box and you wonder why things are freezing, that's mostly the reason why. So we hit okay, no flip, change that to forward. And there we go. Let's hit unfold. Just go a lot faster because there's not that many faces. And it's still a bit of a jumbled mess, but it's more manageable. So now if I click on the same piece, everything should be attached. Ooh, we even picked up some extra on this one. Um, unfortunately, it's still going to have some of these inner workings. Let's go ahead and lose the tabs. It's still going to have some of these inner workings and you may have to mess around with it quite a bit to get some of these edges to join together. Unfortunately, round uh, is one of the harder shapes when working with PEP Designer because uh, pieces want to break off everywhere. Uh, but I do have a video on how to properly unfold files like these for working with foam. So you can check out that video. And yeah, uh, hopefully, I hope this helps you guys out. I know I've struggled with it, and um, the best case scenario would be to find a file that is definitely more low poly to begin with, but in the certain cases where you can't find files or you only have access to one file that is hot, very high definition and you still want to use it, this is a perfect workaround to get Pep Designer to work for it. And it's still a bit choppy, but it's definitely not anywhere near choppy as the first time we loaded or the second time we loaded it. It could also be that I'm running five different programs right now. So who knows? Uh, but yeah, thanks you guys for watching. Uh, I have a couple more tutorials coming out on different things. I have a couple tutorials out right now explaining how to do unfolding for foam and how to import 3D models into Pep Curia Designer 4, everything like that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.